Hey everybody, welcome to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be talking about orthogonal routing, and it's one of the most basic routing styles that you can use in your PCB. Now for all of the routing tips and tricks that people like to talk about, and for all of the time we spend talking about like high speed and RF routing, there's one thing that we often leave out, and that is orthogonal routing. This is a very simple strategy that helps make your PCB look more professional, and it helps you ease some of those routing challenges, especially that can come with two layer boards. So I'm gonna show you what this is, how to use it properly. Make sure to jump into All Team Designer and follow along, and let's get started. So first, what is orthogonal routing? Well, it's actually just like its name suggests. It involves routing traces in two different directions, and in the case of a PCB, it refers to routing on different directions on different layers. Now, this is a really good way to ensure that you keep your board organized and professional looking. So before we get into what is orthogonal routing, I wanna actually show you an example of some less than optimal routing. So here on screen, what I have is our NRF module that we looked at in a series of earlier videos. In that earlier series, we made these design files available. So if you wanna get this design and play with it on your own, you can. Just make sure to check out our NRF 52 series um, on the channel. One thing that I did, if you look here on some of these IO pins, is I routed them up to this connector. So this header up here uh, in the top left corner of the board. Now, if you look at, say, the back layer and the inner layers, especially layer three and layer two, you'll see that some of these pins on this microcontroller route out and then they kind of route around each other and interleave before coming up to either the top layer or the bottom layer on our resistor array and then going into this connector. Now, the reason that we did that on this board is, of course, we added this header after the fact, after some of the other nets were already decided on in this board, and after some of the routing was already done. When you're working on a design, it's appropriate to do that. You don't always have to go all the way back to the beginning of the design and then change everything in order to accommodate something like an additional connector. So it's okay to do that in certain cases. But of course, when you do that, you have to accept that you may not be able to have perfect routing everywhere. So you can see here that it would have been actually ideal to route this row of balls all the way up directly into the uh, connector if possible. And also, uh, if you look on the inner layer, say this row of balls left and then up to the top layer and then vertically into the connector. It would have been nice to be able to do this just along two orthogonal directions and route everything over and then up. Now, is this type of routing gonna create like any kind of major signal integrity problem in this board? Well, frankly, the answer is no. A lot of these IOs are slower. We also are slowing down any of the onboard and offboard IOs so that they have slower edge rate. And even though they're interleaved like this in this region, they're still going to function just fine. You'll notice here that we could actually maybe even some of these out so that they have a bit more consistent width in certain areas. But going up and down across these layers like this and going up to the top or the bottom layer to then connect to this connector is still okay. And this board is going to function just fine, especially when you consider that we've put all of this in these intermediate layers where they're blocked from other signals by a lot of ground. This will still be functional, could look better, and I think it's okay to look at a board and critique yourself in that way. Let's take a look at what exactly orthogonal routing is and some of the ideal ways to implement it in terms of your PCB layout. So let's take a look at a diagram of a PCB and we'll be able to see what exactly orthogonal routing is. Let's just suppose we have this square outline for a board and let's suppose that our layer stack uses four layers. So we have L1, and we have another layer, L4. As you can see, I'm going to color code these. And then let's just suppose we have two internal layers that are planes, L2 and L3, and we'll just make these ground. So this is our layer stack. We're gonna use L1 and L4 for signals. Now, orthogonal routing is really simple. Let's just suppose that we have uh, a component on the top layer and we wanna route it to another component on the bottom layer. What we're gonna do with orthogonal routing is we're going to set 
one layer to be horizontal routing directions, and then the other layer is going to be vertical routing directions. So let's suppose I have a component right here, and I want to route signals over to another component over here. Well, what orthogonal routing would tell me to do is basically to route this direction first, go through some vias, and then route this direction on the back layer. This would allow me to set only horizontal routing channels on one layer, and then only vertical routing channels on the other layer. So this is a great way to keep your PCB organized and professional looking. Now, it's not always easy to implement on every PCB as we saw in the example a little bit earlier. However, if you have a layer stack like this where you have L2 and L3 as ground, and then you have L1 and L4 as signal, you can set up these routing directions and you can keep the signals isolated from each other at the same time. Now, you may have other components on the back layer, let's say like this, and maybe they need to route into this component. You could essentially have this type of direction here. You then maybe come up through vias right here, and then you reach this top layer. Planning this out and sticking to it everywhere in your board isn't always perfect or possible, but this lets you set up certain channels so that you can keep things nice and organized. And then you don't have traces routing around each other and over and under things in order to reach between these different components. Now let's suppose that I have the same board outline, but instead of putting ground on L2 and L3, I have my signal on L1 again, and then I have my other signal on L2. What can I do in this situation? And should I use orthogonal routing? Well, whenever we have a situation like this where maybe we're gonna use orthogonal routing on different layers, we might set up something like this, where we have something like four components and we route, let's say, vertically on L2, and then we route horizontally on L1. In this case, where we have the traces crossing over each other, we now have the potential for some crosstalk depending on the edge rate of signals in this top layer and in this bottom layer. This can also happen and it can be a problem when you have fast digital signals on this top layer and then maybe an analog signal on this inner layer. So in this case, you could have capacitive crosstalk between these two signals due to their overlap right here in this area. So as the signal travels over this area, the capacitive coupling exists between these two traces simply because their surfaces are overlapping each other. And so of course, whenever we have two surfaces that are overlapping each other and they're separated by this dielectric, what happens? Well, we've just basically created the capacitor. So if we then have a digital signal traveling this direction or this direction along this connection, it could then induce some crosstalk into the next layer due to the capacitance between those traces. And then that induced signal could travel this direction or this direction, and it would then be read out by the receiver on either end. That's one of the issues with capacitive crosstalk, and it will be more prominent when your signals are faster. In general, when signals get faster, they also tend to run at lower voltages. And so then the crosstalk that you induce has a greater chance of breaking through the noise margin on this other layer. And then you would have a problem where you are then misinterpreting the data that's being sent between these two components. That can also happen in reverse. So signals traveling vertically on this interconnect could also induce the noise in this top layer interconnect traveling horizontally. It would then be read out at the receiver on either end of this interconnect. That's the reason that instead of having L1 and L2 like this, instead we would wanna have this as L1 and L4, and then we could have L2 slash L3 as ground, assuming we're working in a four layer stack up. Now, another instance where you will commonly see this type of orthogonal routing implemented in a multi-layer board is actually on a six layer board. So let's take a look at a six layer board to see how this might be implemented. So in a six layer board, you may have these orthogonal channels being routed on L3 and on L4. So instead of these being on L1 and L2, they could be at, on L3 and L4. Then you would have L2 and L5 as ground and ground. And then you have L1 as SIG, and then you have L6 as SIG. 
So this is another really common way that you may see orthogonal routing implemented in a six layer PCB. Now with a six layer PCB, is this gonna be any more problematic than if you do it on the top two layers in a four layer PCB? Probably not more or less, it's probably going to be just as problematic. It really depends on the distance between the two layers in the vertical direction. And of course it depends on the speed of the signals traveling on these different channels in horizontal or vertical directions. So because of the potential for crosstalk in those types of boards, Typically, we actually don't set L4 as another signal layer. We might set this as something like power. One of the reasons for that is once you get onto a six layer board, you may be working with a larger processor that needs to consume more power anyways, and it may run at multiple rail voltages. And so it can make sense to then dedicate a single layer just to power, and then have these be your low speed signals on L3. Then on L1 and L6, you could have these be your high speed signals. And this will properly shield your high speed signal layers from each other, as well as from any of the lower speed or control signals that are on L3. So now that we've covered the basics of orthogonal routing in terms of where to do the routing, let's take a look at how to implement this properly in an example board in Altium Designer. So I've created a really simple project here that basically just uses an STM32. I used a small footprint, and then I have a 14 pin pin header right here. And I've just created some net connections between some of the pins on the STM32 going over to this pin header. Here, I'm just gonna update the PCB, execute those changes, and you'll see it brings in our pin header and our little STM32. Here, if we just really quickly change the board size, what I'll be able to do then is just show you some examples of how orthogonal routing might be implemented in a couple of situations. Now I've got a small board size and we can zoom in a little bit and see what we're working with. Here with this pin header, let's suppose I have it along this edge. And then you can see here I have U1 with all of my net connections lined up along this bottom row of pins. Let's just say for a moment, we have U1 on the back layer. Here we can already see a really simple way to implement orthogonal routing. So what I can do is I can immediately just zoom in and start routing. So on my back layer, I can essentially just come out to here. I can drop a via, place it, and immediately route over to my destination. These traces are a little thick if you ask me. I would wanna bring these widths down to something more like eight or six. Let's just go down to eight. And I could just continue this all the way across for this pinout. So if I go to the back layer, I can take this out, can dodge this via a little bit. We wanna set this to eight mils, can come over to here, and I can then drop a via again, come out, and then go straight over to my destination. And then we can just continue this all the way through. Now in this example, I'm able to do this because I had the freedom to set up what the pinout is on this pin header. There was nothing that was really preventing me from setting whatever values I want on this pin header. Now, if you were dealing with a standardized connector, maybe like a USB connector, or maybe you were dealing with like a wire harness or a cable that's coming in from another board that has a specific pinout, you may not have the freedom to do this. So in this example, it's very easy for me to just basically route down and route over. But what if we had something a little bit more complex where maybe we had to go from different connections on different areas of the board, let's say PB8 and PB9, and then maybe instead of routing over to here with five and seven, we're routing onto the other side of the connector. So I'm gonna grab net five, copy it, and put it over here on pin 10. And then for pin seven, I'm gonna do the same thing. So what if we had to do all of this? So now in this case, if we just go ahead and update the PCB, we'll see that we have to implement a little bit of a different strategy here. Here with this, we now have to come off of the top here and we may need to do, go and do something like this, either coming from this direction or possibly from this direction and come straight over. So how you implement orthogonal routing really depends on the pinout between the two components. And sometimes you actually don't have the freedom to do this kind of thing that we've shown in that simple example. In another case, you may have a situation where, let's just say we're gonna take all of these wires, we're gonna cut those, and then we're gonna reverse the order. 
So let's say we need to come off of the STM32 with this pinout, but we've just reversed the order of this pinout. So how do we deal with that? Well, then in that case, if I just update the PCB, execute those changes, after updating the changes, you see that all the connections update. And so in this case now, we may not have it so easy because of course now we have to route across different regions of the PCB. And then in this particular region where along this bottom portion, we're now gonna have some crossover between these nets. So in that case, what we would wanna do is maybe start on the bottom layer, start from the pad directly coming off the microcontroller, come down and then come back up to the top layer and go directly across. So what do we do for the next one? Well, with the next one, let's again start on the back layer, come down and go back up to the top and then come directly across. So now you can see one of the benefits here of using orthogonal routing with layer two and layer three both being ground layers. We're able to cross over these traces across the top and the bottom layer and we have some shielding between all of those different nets. So here we can then, of course, continue this on the back layer and you can start to see the pattern here. I'm just gonna hit star here to change layers again. Now I can route straight across over to my connector. So this is nice because it gives us these long horizontal channels and it gives us these vertical channels on the back layer. There are always exceptions to this. Sometimes you have to put components here. Sometimes there'll be another integrated circuit in the way. There might be another connector. There's a lot that could go on here that could disrupt this. One of the things that's actually nice about this is let's suppose you need to place a termination resistor somewhere along this interconnect. Well, you've got plenty of room to place those types of components when you've got these long horizontal channels. I could put it right here, I could put it right here, I could put it right here, and there's plenty of space in between them so that they won't collide with each other. We also have these nice vertical channels on the back layer. If we had to terminate here at these pins, we could put a resistor here or here or here and so on and so forth. One of the key takeaways from this is how you actually implement orthogonal routing and whether you can do it for all your channels really does depend on the pinouts of the components that you're connecting together. When you have something like a pin header where you need to connect it to, let's say, a large processor like this STM32, if you have the freedom to customize that pinout, it's gonna be much easier for you to implement these types of orthogonal routing strategies and keep the board looking clean. If you're dealing with something that's highly standardized, you might be in some trouble. It's really gonna depend what that pinout looks like coming off of your cable or your connector. Now let's switch it up one last time and we can start to see a situation where maybe we don't have such nice clean routing in this orderly fashion like we have here with these three traces. So let's just suppose instead of you know this being net three, let's say this is seven, and then maybe this one is three, we make a couple other changes here real quick in this schematic. So now after making these changes to the nets, and then I go to my design and update and execute, close. So now what do we have going on here? Well, now we can very clearly see that we've got a lot more crossover mid lane. So in this case where we have crossover mid lane, it's gonna look a little bit different when we do this orthogonal routing. However, we can still do orthogonal routing in this situation. So the orthogonal routing though is not going to create this nice lineup of vias like we saw before. In this case, if I start on the bottom layer and let's say I start here and I route down to here and then switch up to the top layer with the star key, just go straight over. If I then go back to the bottom layer and go to, let's say, to the very next one right here, this one has to come all the way down and around over here before coming up to the back layer. And then I can go over to the pin header and we end. With this one, it's nice and convenient because you see it's on the far edge. I can then, of course, just come straight down, but then I still have to come back up and then on the top layer, I'm gonna cross over again. You can start to see that there really isn't any kind of rhyme or reason to the placement of these vias. It's not that it's totally random, it's just that because these aren't all lined up like we had before, all of these vias are gonna come out where they come out and they're not gonna be totally orderly like we saw in the previous examples. So maybe I start here with this one, you see I have to route it all the way down and then come up to the top layer and then route across and then I can hit that pin header. So even though these vias aren't nice and orderly like we saw before and they aren't lined up in a straight line, we can still implement orthogonal routing with this vertical direction and this horizontal direction. So this is one of the most basic ways that you can implement to ensure that your PCB has some nice clean looking traces routed in two different directions and it's very well organized 
and it's very easy to trace all of these different connections throughout the board between your components. If you have the opportunity to customize a pinout on any of your components, keep this in mind because implementing the pinout such that the routing can be orthogonal is gonna help you keep everything organized and looking professional. All right, thanks everybody for watching this tutorial. That's all we have for today. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Let us know if you try and always implement orthogonal routing and hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our tutorials. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.